Welcome to the CJ Wellerman Show. I'm CJ Wellerman. Thank you for joining us. This week we're examining Israel's war on Palestinian children. A campaign of violence has become measurably worse in recent weeks as Israel seeks new ways to dish out collective punishment to the Palestinian people for resisting occupation. Firstly, however, a quick reminder if you enjoy the show and like to help us reach a greater audience and receive exclusive benefits in return, then please become a member at patreon.com slash CJ Wellman. And please also make sure to hit the subscribe button below. Now let's get into it. Israel is bad for Palestinian children the same way, well, these guys are bad for children, period. And I'm not trying to make light of a very grave situation here, but the crap Israeli soldiers and settlers pull on Palestinian kids on an almost daily basis is the very same kind of violence that allegedly took place on Jeffrey Epstein's island. Now consider this. A 2020 report by a renowned human rights organization found that 40% of detained Palestinian children are sexually abused while nearly 100% are tortured. Now let me say that again. Nearly half of all Palestinian kids are raped in Israeli custody while nearly all are tortured. Rape and torture must never be said in the same breath as children, or anybody for that matter. But then again, this is Israel. And it's not like we're talking about just a handful of kids here. The report was based on the arrest and detainment of more than 600 Palestinian children during a single five-month period in occupied Jerusalem last year. So let's break down the numbers. 640 Palestinian kids are raped and tortured every five months, which equates to 45 Palestinian children being sexually abused and tortured in Israeli detention facilities each and every month, representing 1.5 incidents per day. And this is just Jerusalem alone we're talking about here. These numbers do not include atrocities carried out against Palestinians in the West Bank or within Israel's 1948 borders. Compounding this moral crisis is the fact that a majority of these kids are apprehended by Israeli soldiers without a lawful warrant for their arrest, which makes these actions of a tyrannical totalitarian regime and not that of a country that claims to be a democracy. In fact, the English language has a useful word to describe the unlawful dragging away of kids from their parents. That word is kidnapping. So what we have here is the kidnapping of Palestinian kids by Israeli soldiers who later rape and torture them in adult prisons. I hope this is making you feel uncomfortable because damn it, this crap should make you feel revolted, disgusted and outraged. Now I know what you're thinking. What on earth are these kids being arrested for in the first place? Typically it's for throwing a freaking rock at Israeli armored vehicles or machine gun nests. Are you seriously okay with this? And by you, I actually mean US citizens, because it's you guys who underwrite these atrocities with your tax dollars to the tune of $4 billion per year. So my question to my American friends, colleagues and family is this. Why is it that you don't know about the rape and torture of Palestinian kids in Israeli custody? I mean, it's not like the news media doesn't have this information. Heck, even the always asleep at the switch United Nations has condemned the rape and torture of Palestinian children, saying, and I quote, we express our deepest concern about the reported practice of torture and ill treatment of Palestinian children arrested, prosecuted and detained by the military and the police and about the Israeli government's failure to end these practices in spite of repeated concerns expressed by treaty bodies. What the UN found is this that Israeli occupation prisons are operated in the same way CIA black sites and Guantanamo Bay was used by the United States to circumvent the United States Constitution and criminal justice system, which in fact is just a fancy way of saying Palestinian children are being raped and tortured in secretive dungeons that are well beyond the reach of the courts, media and you. We must also recognize that the interrogation techniques used by Israeli soldiers are forbidden under international law. But then again, one must ask, when has Israel ever been bothered by international human rights law? We are, after all, talking about a 70 year old country built on racism, colonial dispossession and genocide. So the next question is this. Why do Israeli soldiers rape and torture Palestinian kids? Well, the answer to that is twofold. One, to exact forced confessions in order to legitimize Israel's military occupation of the Palestinian territories, and second, to collectively punish the Palestinian people, a strategy meant to crush their hopes for liberation and equality. Now, if I were to tell you exactly how Palestinian kids are arrested and interrogated, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't believe me, because, well, to be real, it's totally bonkers and fundamentally deranged. But here it goes. The majority of these arrests occur during violent midnight house raids, whereby Israeli soldiers break into their homes, point guns at the parents before blindfolding and handcuffing the kids and taking them away to undisclosed locations in the back of windowless military vans. When they arrive at a detention facility without their parents or presence of an attorney, these kids are then stripped naked and handcuffed to a chair before being interrogated for hours while at the same time denied access to food, water and a toilet. 
Often, they are bribed with food and water, in exchange for a confession. When a confession isn't forthcoming, however, the soldiers then lock these kids in dark cells and solitary confinement, and often for days and weeks on end, bringing them back into your interrogation room every few hours or so where they are subjected to further intimidation, abuse and threats. It gets worse. These crimes against Palestinian kids have escalated in recent weeks as Israeli forces carry out a wave of revenge attacks against those who have participated in protests against Israel's campaign of ethnic cleansing in East Jerusalem and 11-day bombing campaign on Gaza, which left 258 Palestinians, including 67 children, dead last month. Israeli forces arrested 3,100 Palestinian processors, of which 471 are children, and we're only talking about the month of May alone. It then goes without saying that the lives and well-being of these children are now in grave and imminent danger, remembering that statistically 40% of them will be raped and 100% will be tortured at the hands of their Israeli kidnappers. Now it's not only Israeli soldiers who abuse Palestinian kids, but it's also Israeli settlers in the occupied West Bank. Last month, Defence for Children International documented four Israeli settler attacks that injured six Palestinian kids between the ages of 3 and 14, with two requiring hospitalisation, including a 10-year-old girl who was attacked by 20 settlers outside her home. Imagine just for a moment this was your daughter, sister, niece, then imagine this is a kind of attack happening almost every day to people you know and love. If you can imagine that, then you understand the harassment and humiliation Palestinians endured daily under Israeli occupation. And who can possibly forget about this, when Israeli settlers set fire to a Palestinian home in the occupied West Bank, leaving this 18-month-old baby burned to death and his parents and four-year-old brother with life-threatening third-degree burns. We must also recognize the constant terror Palestinian children in Gaza are subjected to under Israeli bombardment and blockade. A recent study found that a staggering 81% of Palestinian schoolchildren struggle academically because of conflict-related stress. When I visited Gaza several years ago, Palestinian parents explained to me how their kids had become so traumatized by Israeli airstrikes that they would involuntarily wet themselves whenever Israeli surveillance drones flew overhead. And as anybody in Gaza can tell you, they fly overhead often. This is the psychological traumatization of hundreds of thousands of Palestinian children, constituting a mental health crisis of being called Gaza's, and I quote, invisible wound. Another study found that 6 out of 10 preschool children in Gaza suffer from anemia as a direct result of the Israeli blockade, which is now in its 16th year. It's plain to see that the Israeli occupation has not only robbed Palestinians of their land, their freedom and dignity, but also the future of their children. This is what Palestinians are protesting against today. This is why we have a moral obligation to join them. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to this channel and please help spread the word of your family and friends on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And a final reminder to consider supporting this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ Wellman. But for now, good night, good morning or good day, wherever you are and stay blessed. Thank you.